question? Driving down Clark Avenue to attend tonight's forum, I realized how bad this main artery in our ward is. What are your plans for Clark Avenue? La próxima pregunta es que mientras manejaba por la Clark Avenue, por la Avenida Clark, para atender al foro de esta noche, realicé qué tan mala está esta arteria principal de nuestro distrito electoral 14. Our order this time, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Centron, Mr. Casey. The most important thing we're doing right now, take, it took us a year to do it because of a lot of harm in the city, but we put together a 50-50 program for businesses that can match up to $5,000 for improvements. We've also tried to work with businesses to acquire, for example, um, combined purchases for mulch for the spring uh, for beautification efforts. But the 50-50 program is a very important part. I just want to say, though, that every quarter that we have has a unique issue. West 25th Street has a half billion dollars going into it for Metro Health, and that's going to play a very big role in the redevelopment of West 25th Street. You're already seeing some new businesses and rehabs of buildings already happening there. The Hispanic Village was actually really reinvented for local businesses to place make Clark and 25th at key intersection. And we're working right now with the Hispanic Business Center in engaging in businesses in what we can do to strengthen that, including safety cameras and other initiatives that we're going to be rolling out. Ms. Garcia. My heart, my pride and joy, I have to attest, is on Clark Avenue. They need help. We have many Hispanic businesses and non-Hispanic businesses. I can state this because I have a stack of forms. I've gone to every single business on Clark Avenue, and I have letters signed by each business owner on the negligence, on, 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 on the services that they're needed. If, if, if they're not neglected, whether they're looking for permits, it's very difficult for these business owners to launch their business. They need assistance. I know we have um, Ramon from Joyeria San Juan. If, if I don't insure them, I'm, I'm, I'm patronizing in their business. And those local business people, they need help and they're not getting it. I can attest to that and I have written proof that they are screaming for help and they're screaming for support. And I will work diligently to help those business owners on Clark Avenue as a small business owner myself, I feel the pain. They need help and it's time that we help the local businesses. Thank you. Mr. Centrum. It's gonna take a leadership of three members of council the way they cut our ward. We have zoned, Superman, the downtown councilman, and whoever gets elected to Ward 14 to make sure that this project, everybody's in the same page. And that's the way it is in city council. But first, we have to do strong code enforcement to this property. There's a lot of absentee landlords that rent the spaces and continue milking the system, and the small mom and pop stores can't do much. As soon as we identify those property owners, and then we can put them through storefront renovation, then we're in the right track. The next thing is to identify who wants to open a store, a mom and pop store. Who wants to do that? Many years, it was immigrants who came into, this, into our cities or that were opening those stores, but now there's big boxes. So it's going to have to take a study to, to make sure that we can get people inside the store, uh, for, uh, store fronts. And second, one thing that I learned from Helen Smith, we put money into Dollar Bank with low interest loans and help the businesses as a, as a guarantee with the block grant dollars. Mr. Casey. First thing you're going to have to do is actually do something with the actual street of Clark Avenue, and that's going to take collaboration between you know, the three councilmen that you're going to, the, the wards that you're going to run through going home if you go up Clark Avenue, there's going to be three separate council people until you get up to, to Fulton Avenue. I will engage the small business owners. I will use the 50-50 match grant as well as storefront renovation, but what it's going to take is somebody with the vision. And by all means, a vision is not knocking down a perfectly good building in the Zanoni building and putting up a rallies on the corner of Clark Avenue and West 25th. That's not vision. You need to have something that is going to be stable on Clark Avenue. It's going to be one of the main thoroughfares. 
first thing you're going to have to do is be able to drive it without bottoming your car out or without losing a tire or a rim. Um, but you're also going to have to engage these, these small business owners and go after the individuals who are renting. Our next question, how will you work with the police in regards to drugs and nuisance properties? Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron. La próxima pregunta se refiere a la policía. ¿Cómo ustedes piensan trabajar con la fuerza policíaca en referencia a las drogas y las propiedades problemáticas? Casey. Working with the police is not a problem with me. I've known Commander Salzler since I was 17 years old. I've known Commander McCartney for the past 15 years. When I was the Wheaton Seed Project Coordinator, that's all we did was work basically with the police on the, on the weeding aspect of it. We would use the police to set up initiatives as we did um, for, the, for the last 10 years, focusing primarily on drugs, prostitution, and quality of life issues. I know that Commander Salzler is very big into using the nuisance laws for the city of Cleveland and actually going after property owners uh, or absentee property owners who aren't educated in screening their tenants and who actually have to, um, you, the, the actual residents have to deal with the um, quality of life issues with that stop. What is that? <laughs> This has been an active problem that I've been dealing with for the almost eight years I've been in council. We have a very broad relationship. I want to point out Lucy Torres is here with the Community Relations Board. She's a Hispanic liaison. It's important to mention the Community Relations Board because we work, first of all, with block clubs in residents who identify for us nuisance properties. We check with the Division of Safety if, in fact, the calls for service have come in. I helped write the legislation with Donna Brady and Matt Zone and others. Where we, where we can require, if there are three incidents within a 60-day period, we can label it a nuisance property. We actually go with the community service unit and sometimes the commander, as well as with the community relations staff. We go and meet with landlords and tenants, and we try to mediate. Oftentimes you can't mediate because the relationships are so bad. But we've made, I think, a lot of inroads in trying to deal with this problem. I think the law has helped. We actually strengthened it, we amended it to the three and 60 days, it was three and 30 days, and we'll continue to do that work with our police, the community relations division, and our block clubs. Ms. Garcia. Seven murders in one week. That's what we are facing today in the city of Cleveland in the Ward 14. I came out of my daughter's house two days ago to find her street full of cops because someone shot someone else. Down the street from our Current councilman, I believe someone was also shot. I'm not sure if they were killed. I wish our issues and our concerns were drugs and nuisance. We're dealing with human trafficking, domestic violence, abduction, kidnapping, murder. Is this what we're looking forward to? We need to strongly speak out, work in unity with our police department. I will piggyback on everyone here. I love Commander Selzer. He's done a marvelous job but he can't take care of this city or this ward on his own. We need every resident of Ward 14 to speak up and stand up, not only for our rights, but for the rights of every other constituent and human being in this city, regardless of their race or background or culture. Thank you very much. Mr. Sintran. We need to expand the services. When we look at the Cleveland Clinic, those officers have the power of the big jurisdiction jurisdiction to arrest. We got Metro Hospital, we need to give them the same kind of power uh, and a big, bigger radius. We have CMHA, we have houses that we are renting through Section 8. We should be using those officers. We have the Cuyahoga County Deputy Sheriff's Department, we have those officers. So there's a lot of enforcement out there. The thing is the city of Cleveland has to pass legislation to give them authority, give them authority to do the arrest in our city. Cleveland police officers can't do it by themselves. If we think they could do it, that's how we're in trouble. It takes us, legislators, pass laws, tell the mayor, this is what we want as residents in, in the city of Cleveland. And if they don't do it, section 749 of the 
uh, city charter give us that rights to do it. And I will tell you later on, who am I closer? Next question. We have two more questions and then we're going to um, allow each candidate to summarize the Q&A period and then we'll go into the final three minutes for each candidate. So, next question. Three of the four candidates have mentioned the Hispanic community repeatedly during the question and answer period, but there are other groups in this area. What have you or what will you do for those groups? How will you give the other groups the attention um, you give the Hispanic community. The order this time, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia. Nos quedan solamente dos preguntas. Luego de las preguntas, los candidatos van a resumir las preguntas y luego van a tener cada uno tres minutos para dar su conclusión. La penúltima pregunta es, tres de los cuatro candidatos aquí presentes han mencionado la comunidad hispana específicamente durante las preguntas y contestaciones. Pero, ¿qué de los otros grupos en esta área? ¿Qué usted ha hecho o planea hacer para esos grupos? ¿Y cómo le dará la atención que recibe actualmente la comunidad hispana a los grupos que no están mencionados. El orden va a ser el señor Cintrón, el señor Casey, el señor Cummings y la señora García. Yes, I am Latino. But for eight years, not only as a Latino, that I only did not serve Latinos, I served everybody in general. I knew new sections. If you're capable of walking to my old sections, and ask anybody who's not Latino with one of my yard signs, they could tell you that I took care of them personally. Man, family is a rainbow coalition. I worked at, at the age of 10 with the ethnic community in the broadcasting field. I made sure that a strong community standing together would be a, a proud community. If a Latino has a house next door, and there's someone who's not Latino next door, and across the street, somebody got robbed, I bet you both of them would run up there and try to protect that neighbor. That's exactly what I intend to do and have done it with my past record. I will continue protecting people of residents of War 14 in the city of Cleveland, regardless who they are. Regardless of who they are. Mr. Casey. Well, I'll use common sense and whoever asked the question, I'll assume that I was that one of the four that uh, has not mentioned the Hispanic because it doesn't matter to me who you are. We don't call Ward 2 in the city of Cleveland the Black Ward. We don't call Ward 17 in the city of Cleveland the White Ward. But we do call Ward 14 the Hispanic Ward. Why? We're all one people. It shouldn't matter to me if you're black, white, Hispanic, green, orange, Baptist, Catholic. I don't care who you are or what you represent. I will provide the best service that I possibly can, and I will represent you to the best of my ability, no matter who you are, what ethnicity you come from, what color you come from, or what your background is. Mr. Cummins. Thank you. Well, bueno, yo sé puede hablar por español, pero también y hemos de hablar por ruski. I can speak Russian too, a little bit of Romanian. I, I do value everybody in terms of what their backgrounds are. But what we've learned over the years, particularly with my Peace Corps experience in Central America and Eastern Central Europe, it's about place making. And it's about people feeling comfortable with who they are. So we value highly our block clubs. We value highly our neighborhoods. We want to do more with promotions of our unique neighborhoods. We've already uh, put in place a Jones Home Historic District. I belong to historic societies on the near west side and believe our history is part of our place making uh, job to understand where we came from. But obviously we have rich resources in St. Rocco's in terms of our Italian community. Even though many of them do not live here anymore, they provide a great service in terms of their investments. So I think generally speaking, it's about supporting everybody through various manners, be it block clubs, be it through faith-based initiatives, be it through sports, be it through historic districts, 
However we can bring community together in pride and quality of life, that's what we need to do. Ms. Garcia. Well, I have to apologize. Um, whoever asked that question, if at some point in time it felt like we were dividing here, I would like to apologize for that feeling. And my answer to you all is, I treat everyone equal. And all of the services and all of the answers that I, all of the questions that I have answered has been catered to each and every one of you. There isn't a division in my heart. Therefore, whatever I've stated that I'm going to do is for the ward in general. I love the fact that Ward 14 is a diversified ward. I love each and every one of you, and I approve this message. We have one last question, and we are going to limit the candidates for this one question to 30 seconds. I know that's tough, but we're really running uh, close on our, our, our schedule, and we're trying to keep to it. The order for this question would be Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins. Is our timer ready for this one? I got it. Okay, the question is, what are the strengths and limitations of the council person's office? And what are the responsibilities of residents in the process of strengthening the neighborhood? In 10 words or less, <laughs> gentlemen and ladies. Be happy to. What are the strengths and limitations of the council person's office? What are the responsibilities of residents in the process of strengthening our neighborhood? Para la próxima pregunta, debido al tiempo, nomás tienen 30 segundos, 30 seconds, guys. 30 segundos para contestar esta pregunta. La pregunta está dividida en dos partes. Número uno, ¿cuáles son las fuerzas y limitaciones de la oficina del asambleísta, del consejero de la asamblea. Y la segunda parte de la pregunta es cuál es la responsabilidad de nuestros residentes en el proceso de fortalecer nuestro vecindario. 30 seconds. No limitations for the council individual and the strength are to continuously seek strength and guidance and the resident's responsibility would be to continuously contact the city council person, make them accountable for their position. Thank you. Mr. Sintra. The strength of the office is to present strong legislation to, re, uh, to protect the residents of the city of Cleveland Ward 14. I don't see no limitations. If there is, I will make sure that we could fine tune that, that limitation. And the responsibility of the neighbors is to stay strong on the block clubs that we could get enough input to present you at the city council chambers in the committee meetings. Mr. Casey. There are no limitations um, for, the, for the office of the council, especially when there's strong resident involvement within the community. Um, as far as the, the residents, the stronger the residents are, the more involved the residents are, the stronger the council office will be. Comments? Great. The strengths for a council position is the fact that you have tremendous opportunity to shape policy and work with the public and your constituencies to make a change in your neighborhood. There are limitations in terms of the city's administration and their services. And one example is that our housing committee got delivered $1.2 million to take down 260 houses that were vacant and abandoned. But it only, I needed the residents to do that. That's why we use a strong community-based approach in empowering residents to back up the councilman to ensure resources are brought to this community. 